So as well as the regular Discord servers, I found myself hanging out on a couple of AMV Discords as well. And on one of them, I was asked how I would put an aura behind an anime character. So this is how I did it. Okay, so we've got our clip on the timeline. Um, basically, the first thing we want to do is duplicate it. So press and hold the Alt key or the Option key and just drag up to make a duplicate. I'm going to take this duplicate into Fusion. So the first thing you need to do is to mask your character. Now, how long that masking takes will very much depend on the complexity of the character and how much movement there is. I'm not going to mask as part of this tutorial as I will be here all day. So what I've done is I have actually got a mask already prepared. Basically, it's a polygon node. Start at frame zero. Trace your outline and then come forward a frame at a time and make any adjustments that you need to the points. With this particular character, I chose it deliberately because she doesn't move that much. Uh, where you see keyframes here is where I've had to actually move the polygon. We have our masked figure. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a background node. And we're going to take a second output from our media and pipe it into the mask of the background to give us this. Select your background node, turn it white. Next, we're going to go with an erode dilate node. This lets us increase the size of the mask, like so. And from that, we're going to go into a blur node, which lets us add blur to the image. So to get the waviness, what we need to do now is displace this. And to do that, shift space bar, displace. And we're going to drive the displace with a, soft, uh, with a fast noise. So bring in a fast noise, pop it into the viewer for a minute, and then we're going to need to tweak our fast noise to get it looking somewhere like we want it. This is all personal cho choice. So if we now pipe this fast noise into our displace node and view it, you can see already you're getting sort of fringing at the edges. Select your fast noise, add some seize rate to it. Again, it's going to be a personal choice thing as to how much movement you want. The more seize rate, the more you're going to get movement. What I also did is if you select your fast noise and you displace, move it along a bit, come to your blur node and merge that onto a background node, connect it back to your displace node and make this background transparent. What you can now do is take a second output from your fast noise and drop it onto this merge and it gives you this kind of effect. The other thing I did with the fast noise was I animated it. So come to your first frame, go to center on your fast noise and just add a keyframe, come forward, maybe 10 frames. And then just move the Y value up slightly. And then if you come to the top of your screen and find spline, check that. Check your fast noise, come to this double arrowed icon that says zoom to fit. So you can see both keyframes, drag and select them. So that both selected, come to the bottom of your key, uh, your spline window and find this icon here, which is set relative. 
And what that will do is it will make the fast noise just move up at a constant rate for as long as the clip is basically. So we now get this effect where you look as though your fire is going up. If we now disconnect our media in and take an output from it and merge it onto the display node, we end up with our aura effect. So we can come back and tweak some of the values. So like your road dilate, you can knock up a bit. So we can now tweak this to make it a bit bigger. The next thing I added was the sort of outline. And we can take a second output from our, oh, a third output from our media in into another background. Again, we can turn it white. In fact, what we can do is just take our background, our erode dilate and our blur and just paste them in. Because we want basically the same thing. So let's get rid of that one. So we have at this stage. And what we can now do is if you come to your top of the screen and open your effects library, go to templates, go to fusion and go to tools. And you'll find this node edge control. If you bring that in, pipe it in and you get this kind of effect. We now again copy and place, copy and paste our displace and fast noise and pipe our edged output into them. We now have this kind of effect going on. And what we can do is we can now merge that back on top of everything else. So we've now got this outline. So if you want the outline to be less pronounced, just bring the blend down on the merge. And for both of these, what we can now do after the displace node is we can add a color corrector node. We can start playing with the color of our auras. And again, after this displace node, put in another color corrector. Come back to our alpha edge and we can tweak some of these values to get more of the look we're going for. There's lots of different values within the various nodes that you can play with to get the kind of look that you want. Uh, but that's the basic idea of how I did the glow, or not the glow, the aura. What you can do once you bring this back to the Edit tab, if it's a bit strong, come to Composite, come to Opacity, and just gradually bring it down. Your figure won't fade away because you've got the original figure underneath. So no matter how transparent you make that, she's going to stay as bright. It's just about making the aura more transparent, like so. The other thing I added in after the color corrector on the outline is I put a glow node in just to add a bit of something to it again. It's a choice thing, mess about, see what you like, see what you don't like. I guess the point of the tutorial was to get the aura. Or more to the point, how you got the aura. I still think we can make that bigger. And then we can 
maybe tweak these down a bit so that it's not quite as I haven't got to terms with what this does but again it's another control that you can play with to try and get the look that you're after so yeah it's kind of a bit left of field for me it's not the kind of thing that I would normally do but I was asked how I would put an aura behind this anime character and that's kind of how I would do it. Hope you get something out of it, even if it's not recreating the exact ev uh, effect, you can at least get a sense of how I've done it and the techniques I've used. Uh, so yeah, p please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers!